The free market is roundly denounced by today's defenders of the new human rights. These defenders are the chief supporters of reduced private property rights, reduced rights to profits, they're anti-competition and pro-monopoly. These people in our country and elsewhere believe that they have more intelligence and superior wisdom to the masses. And they believe that they have been ordained to forcibly impose that wisdom on the rest of us, whether we like it or not. Every tyrant has had a good reason for restricting the freedom of others. The reason why uh, the agenda of tyrants is to eliminate the free market. Why do tyrants want to eliminate the free market? Well, the free market implies voluntary transactions, and tyrants do not trust that people behaving voluntarily will do what the tyrant thinks that they ought to do. Their plan requires the either the elimination or the attenuation of the market or the elimination of peaceable voluntary exchange. Their plan calls for economic planning. I will give you a definition of economic planning that will last you your entire lives. Economic planning is nothing more than the forcible superseding of somebody else's plan by the powerful elite. That is, for example, I might want to buy a a, a Honda motorcycle from a Japanese producer. Well, the powerful elite will say, Williams, we're gonna supersede your plan through tariffs and quotas because we think you ought to buy a Harley Davidson. Or my daughter might wanna work for the hardware store guy down the street for $4 an hour. She says it's okay, the hardware store guy says it's okay, her mother says it's okay, and her father says it's okay. But the powerful elite will eliminate that transaction because it's not being transacted at the prices they think it ought to be, namely the minimum wage. Now, many people do all of this, they want to control our lives in the name of good. But do-gooders fail to realize that most good done in the world is not done in the name of good. Matter of fact, if you ask me, Williams, what's that noble motivation that gets the most wonderful things done. I would say greed. That is people trying to get as much as they can for themselves. I'm not talking about ripping off people, robbing people. I'm talking about people trying to get as much as they can for themselves. Now you might not have thought it this way, but let me ask you a couple of questions. Now last winter, you had Texas ranchers getting up in the middle of night in blizzards, running down stray cows to take care of them, feed them, inoculate them, making this huge personal sacrifice so that New Yorkers will have beef on their shelves. You have Idaho potato farmers this summer doing back-breaking work, the sun beating down on them, bugs biting them, dirt underneath their fingernails, making this personal sacrifice so that New Yorkers will also have potatoes. Now, why do you think they're doing that? Do you think they're doing that because they love New Yorkers? They may hate New Yorkers. I'm not that wild about New Yorkers myself. But they make sure that beef and potatoes gets to New York every single day of the week. Why? Because they want more for themselves. This is what Adam Smith said in uh, The Wealth of Nation, that the social good is promoted mostly by the private interest. Now I ask you, how much beef and potatoes do you think New Yorkers would have if it all depended on human love and kindness? I'd be worried about New Yorkers. <laughs> I've often said that I don't care much about future generations. And sometimes people say, well, Williams, how come you don't care about future generations? And I asked them, what have future generations ever done for me? <laughs> I mean, some kid that's going to be born in 2050, what has he done for me? How then, if he hasn't done anything for me, how then am I obliged to do anything for him? But however, if you watch my actual behavior, my behavior would 
make a lie of that sentiment. That is, I have a nice property in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And several years ago, I took $400 that I could have consumed selfishly, bought two nice bottles of uh, Chateau de Chem sauternes wine. But instead of doing that, I planted trees around my property. Now, when those trees reach their full maturity, I'll be dead. There'll be some 2050 kid in my trees eating my apples and pears. A number of years ago, Mrs. Williams made some extensive improvements on our house. New sunroom with my money, by the way. And, and there's going to be some, the sunroom's going to outlive us. And there's going to be some 2050 kid enjoying my sunroom, tracking mud in there. Well, what might explain the sacrifice of current consumption for some good that's going to benefit a future generation? The answer is very easily. The nicer my house is, the longer it will provide housing services, what? The higher the price I get when I go to sell it. That is, by pursuing my own selfish private interests, I can't help but make a house available for a future generation, whether I mean to or not. And ask yourself, would I have the same incentives if there were a 75% transfer tax when I went to sell the house? I would not. Whatever weakens my private property rights in that, in, in that house weakens my incentive to do the socially responsible thing, namely conserve on the scarce resources of our society.